Number 85, a 0.025 gram sample of a compound composed of boron and hydrogen with a molecular mass of around 28 AMU burns spontaneously when exposed to air, producing 0.063 grams of B2O3. What is the empirical and molecular formulas of the compound? Okay, guys, so buckle in those seatbelts because <laughs> we're going on a wild ride. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. All right. Let's, let's do this. Okay. So the first thing is, is that they're trying to explain to me or to us uh, that there's a chemical reaction going on here, right? They're saying that, you know, we have a compound, which is consisting of boron and hydrogen, and it burns. When you see that word, it's trying to tell you that this is a combustion reaction, right? And it was exposed to air. Air is talking about oxygen. And here is one of the products. So I know that I have a compound that has boron, which is B, and hydrogen, which is H, right? And when exposed to air, so now it's just kind of like the, um, the combustion reaction, but they're giving you a little heads up. Instead of CO2, because I don't have carbon, I have boron, I will produce B2O3, but since I have the hydrogen, I'm going to make water. Just like in a standard combustion reaction, you will make water. Now in this case, I can't really balance this equation because I don't know what this compound is. So I'm just gonna say that it's BX because I don't know that number for boron, could be one, two, three, and the same thing for hydrogen. I'm gonna call it Y because I don't know how many hydrogens I got. The only thing that I basically know is that this reaction produced 0.063 grams of B2O3, and the whole entire sample of the boron and hydrogen compound was 0.025 grams. Okay, where do we go from here? I don't know, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Where do we go from here? Well, there's a little law in chemistry, that's the law of conservation of mass. That means that if you form a compound, so let's just say boron, all of the mass, theoretically, all the mass that you formed in this boron should come from the compound that had the B in it. And the same thing goes for the hydrogen. All of basically this hydrogen over here made or came from this hydrogen. We can use this information to get the individual amounts of boron and hydrogen, because that's what we have to do. Whenever we try to find an empirical formula, remember this is back to chapter three, we have to find out the individual components. That means that I need to know the grams of boron and the grams of hydrogen. So that's where we're at right now. That's our first objective. The only true compound that we know that has the boron in it is the B2O3. So what I can do is I can use my stoichiometry to go from B2O3 to just B, using our grams to moles to moles to grams idea, right? So from here, if I just write out the, the flow diagram, I can take the 0 0.063 grams of the B2 uh, B2O3, and I can go to the moles of B2O3, right? Grams to moles, and then moles to grams. You've probably seen this if you've been with the, the videos by now, right? So I can go from moles of just boron to then grams of just boron. That's the flow chart for right now. So let's get started. I have 0 0.063 grams, and maybe I'll put this in like red, kind of how I, I usually do it, right? We don't want that, so times by a ratio, throw that unit on the bottom, grams of B2O3 go on the bottom, mole of B2O3 go on the top, right? And mole to gram ratio of the same compound is always the periodic table. 
So when you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole, and then go on the periodic table, get that molar mass. So I got two borons, so two times 10.81, plus three oxygen, three oxygens, yeah, three times 16. So I get 69.62. Okay, next step, cancel these out. Let's keep going, make another ratio. I want to get to just moles of the B. So moles of B2O3 on the bottom, and now I'm crossing over to the next thing here, so I'm going to put it in blue, moles of B. Now usually this step, we usually use the balanced equation, but in this case I don't have a balanced equation because I don't know what this compound is. So I have to use some other relationship or ratio, and this relationship is basically going to come from the compound, the whole compound B2O3. You can make ratios and relationships from just talking about an individual compound. Now you say to yourself, okay, if I have one whole B2O3, how many borons is in the whole B2O3? Yeah, there's two borons, right? There's two. So use that information. Say that again. For every one whole compound, so for every one mole, one whole compound, how many borons are there? There's two. Two Bs for every one whole compound. And that's how you do those relationships. So now that cancels out. And we just want to get to grams. So one more step, guys, for this part. I told you it's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> so mole will be on the bottom. Gram of B up top, but I'm having, I'm having fun. What do you, what do you guys think? Hopefully, hopefully this is a little bit entertaining. Gra grams to mole relationship again of the same element. So that's the periodic table. One mole is whatever the mass is on the periodic table for boron. So that's 10.81. Cancel the moles of B. And now let's just get this answer. 0 0.063 divided by 69.62 times 2 times 10.81. So now I know that I produced 0. Point, we'll say 0. 0.01956 grams of boron. That's coming from this compound, but law of conservation of mass says that if I have 0. 0.01956 grams of boron here, and this is the only compound that has B on the other side, all the mass of the boron here has to be the mass of the boron here. So this number is actually the boron of BXHY. So I know this number now. Grams of boron, easy peasy, 0 0.01956 grams of B. Now we just gotta get the grams of hydrogen. Then I can go and get my empirical formula. Well, how do I do that? Well, remember, this compound is only boron and hydrogen. And they told us that the total was 0 0.025 grams. So if I have 0 0.025 grams of my whole compound, BXHY, and I know all of the boron is 0 0.01956 grams, if I subtract these two, the boron goes away, and look what you have left. That's just the mass of all the hydrogen. So let's subtract it, and then I'll know the mass of the hydrogen. So 0 0.025 minus 0 0.01956. 0 0.025 minus, up, 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 up. yep, good. And I get 0 0.00544 grams of hydrogen. And let's just write that over here. So now I know this one. 0 0.005. Four, four grams of hydrogen. Cool. Guess what, guys? Pause the video because I'm erasing all this. It's a long problem. But we basically did the first part. We needed to get these individual element values. So pause the video if you need to write anything down, but it's all going. Bye. Even this part. We don't need this anymore. And technically, we don't even need this anymore as well. So we can get rid of all of this. Eh. And maybe I'll just, whoop, can't do that. <laughs>
I'll, I'll guess I'll just erase, I guess I'll just erase this because this we don't need. Okay, now, empirical formula, right? Empirical formula was all in chapter three, so technically we did this. So if you do need a refresher, go back to the playlist chapter three and check out all those empirical formula um, videos. But there was a flow chart for that as well, and that flow chart is this. It was this whole idea in which you start with percent and you go to grams to moles to get the mole ratio, then finally you can get your empirical formula and then your molecular formula. In this case, we already have grams. So I'm already at this stage of the game. So I don't have to start all the way from the beginning. But I got to now go through the whole process to get to the empirical formula and the molecular formula. So in this case, I'm just going to write out what I have. 0 0.01956 grams of boron. And then I have 0 0.00544 grams of hydrogen. And now this kind of goes bye-bye. Okay. So the first thing is turn those grams into moles. We know how to do that. That's the periodic table. So I do it for both of them at once. It's easier that way for empiric, uh, empirical formulas and stuff like that. So grams of boron, grams of hydrogen go on the bottom because you want to cancel out those units. And we'll put mole of boron and then mole of hydrogen. And maybe I'll just, just to kind of get them both. There you go. So periodic table, one mole of boron, one mole of hydrogen equals the weight of what it is on the periodic table. So boron is 10.81, hydrogen is 1.008. So I'm just going to cancel out the units that I don't want. And now let's see how many moles of boron and moles of hydrogen I have. 0 0.01956 divided by 10.81. I get roughly 0 0.00181, we'll say, mole of boron. And then 0 0.00544 divided by 1.008. I get roughly 0 0.005. We'll say four zero. Okay. So now we're here. So now we need to get to a mole ratio. Well, in order to know what to do there, think of what an empirical formula is. An empirical formula is a compound that has the lowest number of ratio for its subscripts. So it can't, it's basically the most simplified compound, right? So keep that idea of like lowest in your mind. If you want to get that ratio, all you have to do is divide each number by the lowest of the two. So you have to just look at these two numbers and say, okay, 0 0.00181 and 0 0.00540, which one is the lowest number? It looks like this one is. So I'm going to divide each one by that number. Okay. So in this case, this would just cancel and be one. So I have one mole of boron. And then let's see what we get here. 0 0.0540 divided by 0 0.00181. Ah, this one comes out beautifully. In my calculator, it says 2.98, blah, blah, blah. But since this is very, very close to three, I'm gonna hold it at three. If you can round at this stage of the game to a whole number, go do it, okay? Now what's left is the empirical formula. All you have to do, since we have the whole numbers, 1 and 3, you just combine them and you get your empirical formula. So for right now, my empirical formula would just be B1, but you don't have to put a 1 there, H3. So that part's done. Now all we have to do is just find the molecular formula. So there's one final, I guess, mathematical thing that we have to do to find the molecular formula. All you're going to do, and maybe if I can, I'll just take this and kind of drop this down so I have a little bit more room. All you're going to do is you're going to take your molecular mass, which they should tell you, and divide it by 
your empirical mass. This is going to tell you how much larger your molecular formula is to your empirical formula. Now in the question, it said that we had a gram sample of the boron hydrogen with the molecular mass of 28 AMU. So that's my molecular mass. So I'm just gonna say 28. Now when you're doing molecular mass, it, it doesn't matter. AMU is just the small scale of things. Grams per mole is the bigger, but it's the same exact idea. So I'm just gonna put 28. And now to get my empirical mass, I just have to find basically the molar mass of BH3. That's my empirical formula. So BH3, I got 1B, 10.81, plus 3 times 1.008. So I get 13.834. Now I'm just going to divide them. And let's see what number I get. 28 divided by this number. I get roughly a 2. This number tells me how much larger my molecular formula is to my empirical formula. So my molecular formula, all we have to do is just take my empirical formula and multiply each subscript by 2. So it's still going to be B and H, but now since there was one boron, 1 times 2 is now 2, so it's B2, and then it was 3 hydrogens, 3 times 2 is now 6. So that's my molecular formula, B2, H6. Empirical is BH3, molecular is B2, H6. Wowzes. Whew, guys, <laughs> what do you think? I need a glass of water after this one, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Thank you so much for, you know, tuning into the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, all right? Uh, good luck on all your future tests and quizzes, and you guys got this, okay? So, yeah, thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.